Well, hey there guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome into Smite 2 Long Didn't Watch Your One-Stop Shop for All Things Founders Edition for Smite 2. <laughs> My name's Gormizer, sitting on that side is Shelly, and on that side is JMac, which means that side's E-M-E-A, and that side's N-A. And what's funny is I think that we don't, we don't have to do that. But I like it because I can remember without having to remember who's doing what. We don't have to do anything, Gore. This is our show. This, you're right. We could, we could take it off the rails. We really could. But we probably won't. We'll probably. And so here's where we we'll talk probably, about we'll 90s probably. cartoons again for an hour. We'll probably just stick to the script. Yeah, we'll probably talk about Smite Founders Edition and how it's going yeah, on. We have, like, we have people holding cue cards up behind the camera right uh, now. Yeah, the, well, that's no, no, next, weird. No, next card. Next card. There you go. That's the one. <laughs> that one just has a picture of me that says, you better do it. <laughs> and it has a knife at my throat. I don't know what to, meant to do about that. Uh, no, so... We've got a lot going on. Absolutely. Latam and Brazil and APAC are running their founder series. Yipper. Swiss is going on for NA and EMEA. And open brackets going on for NA and EMEA. Yeah. And so there's a lot. Hey, there's a lot of Smite 2 happening all weekend. I might say too much. Uh, you can watch them. There's a lot of there places. Like, I know, uh, what's it called? Like, some people are streaming the offline games th yeah. that we're not broadcasting. Obviously, we're broadcasting. There's the OCE stream in the morning for, like, APAC, and they do that at, like, 4.30 on Smite yeah, game. It's real early. Eastern. Eastern. Uh, it's like real people time where they're from, but not where we're from. <laughs> That's like they just got off of work and decided, let's go home and cast some Smite. Uh, let's see. Who else is going on? Uh, I, I know, know D'Lo has yeah. been doing broadcasts for Latam. In the sewer. In the sewer. In the sewer, but also in Spanish, which in is in triply impressive to me because I don't know that language. Because <laughs> I don't know how you even set up a system in the sewer. Wait, hold on. D'Lo, what's sewer in Spanish? Because Dilo's in chat. I just saw him pop okay, in. Okay, I was going to say, he, is Dilo in the room? Yeah, dude, no, he's on yeah. the Dilo with two underscores between one, ones between on and ones between the. <laughs> just read it. <laughs> <laughs> on underscore the underscore Dilo. That's where you can watch those ones. Uh, so what do I, I guess we are we waiting to find out what sewer is in Spanish or, or can I uh, maybe maybe we just. I'm not going to try and pronounce that. I'm going to butcher that so badly. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I can't tell which one yeah, I can't. supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is honestly your fault for asking. This is, this is on me. This yeah. is on me. For those watching live, or not live, um, there is a lot of Spanish being put in the chat, and J-Max trying his best to read it, and uh, I don't think he's going to take a shot at and it. And yeah, what we're going to do oh, instead. Um, oh. Al Alcantarillado. Uh, there you go. And that is all you needed to say. Uh, but big deal. This guy. Yeah, we are, e -A. We are qualifying e two teams from Swiss. That will be able to skip to playoffs, which is this big, weekend. Yes. First teams that'll go three L. There will be two of them. Um, so the way that I broke down the region is just by you know going break through it, just everything break, as a whole. Break, because break. not only are the three O teams going to be able to qualify, there's going to be you know two one teams that are going to be one game off coming soon. You know there's going to be a, a lot of smite going on. So we can't just look at the the top four teams at the moment. Um, but when you want to talk about making predictions and you want to talk about a team that is likely going to be able to qualify, um, you can't skip over Team Risk. And, nope. of course, Team Risk had a fantastic weekend, as they usually do. Yep. And I think I was not casting this set. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was running social for this one. And it just it never fails to blow my mind. Um, just witnessing the things that genetics can pull off, right? Like, he's just... One of the most talented supports to ever do it. And, uh, whoa, whoa, I know that guy. I love that guy. Um, and he is just... And now he'll turn into an EMEA gameplay clip. Gore doesn't have that power. Ah. That would have been so <laughs> That would have been so dope, though, wouldn't it? Gore, Gore does not have that power. He's hey, guys, it's Malum. He's plugged into absolutely nothing, and that's what you need to remember. But, but he's later. Point being, uh, the things that genetics can pull off <laughs> never ceases to amaze me because... I, I already know what he's capable of, but there's situations where I'm like, oh, he's coming I mean, out. Did you see that this week in Smite 2 clip? He's capable of oh, yeah. like, so much button press per second. And he's got a very clicky keyboard, which is also extremely <laughs> important. Um, but not just genetics, not just team risk, like we, like we mentioned, uh, the matchups. Oh, we do get to see it. There you go. Uh, genetics gets caught out, essentially 1v4ing. 
and then just makes it into like a clean four-man Yamira where the rest of the team can just roll up, bail him out, and turn it into a gold fury. Of course, Chase, the enemy, was already down, but it's like when you put that much into a Ymir and you're not able to confirm that kill or the objective afterwards, um, that one hurts. That definitely hurts your mental. Mm -hmm. So that's a team you got to be watching out for. You probably already are, um, but continue to do so. Uh, next up, a team that I was very impressed with um, because if you remember at the start of the weekend, there was Typhon's Fang buffs, there was some um, shifts to cooldown, and Anubis went from being completely unlooked at to actually a pick that teams were banning away yeah. they were first picking. By the day two, by Sunday, that had kind of went away. There wasn't as much Anubis, mm -hmm. but regardless, the tanky like Genji's Guard, Typhon's Fang, Anubis build was actually showing some promise. So uh, this was a clip from Threat Level Midnight where it looked like Distortion F was getting ganked, and he certainly is here. Ends up 1v2ing, but the lifesteal that Anubis can provide uh, keeps him alive long enough to stall for his team. And then, of course, they roll up and just get the full wipe and are able to translate that into uh, an attempted fire giant, of course, which unfortunately for Threat Level Midnight doesn't actually end up working out. But still, a great play regardless, and that shows you know why maybe you shouldn't be sleeping on the Anubis solo. Uh, still definitely a hard pick to play around, and you kind of need a good start. You need to be able to have a little bit of jungle presence over there, but I don't think it's top pick, top ban material necessarily, mm -hmm. but definitely still strong and definitely something uh, to keep your eyes on. But on that same vein, in that same game in particular, old and new, they were they were down. And J Mac, I'm just going to use the words you say in this clip because I believe you were casting this one. Uh, after a, a botched end call, after a botched attempt at the Titan, they end up defending, pushing through, and then sending us to three games, which is uh, you know a big deal because it seemed like they were on their last ropes. If you look at the gold differential, it's actually in Old and New's favor at this point. But it certainly was not leading up to that Titan Seed. So, unfortunately for Threat Level Midnight, they stuck around just a little bit too long and then end up getting wiped against. And then bring us to game number three, uh, where Old and New were able to take it, I believe. So, that it just goes to show, not only do you got to keep your eyes on overstaying, you have to keep your eyes on these Fire Giant plays, you also got to know when you have the damage to actually go for an end call, because uh, that could be very crucial when, you're, when your respawn timers are as late as they were. So, Old and New, definitely another team to watch out for um, in that lower end of the bracket, not quite at the the elimination period mm -hmm. just yet. They're at the, I believe, two and one section, um, or that's called the, the the one and one section. But yeah, could be two and one. Could be two and one. They win. next week um, if you're keeping your eye on them, of course. But we are not done yet because if we're talking about those top four. You got to bring up teams like Giovanni Giorgio, which uh, has been sitting in that like number three spot leading up to the Swiss and is still has not fallen down out of the uh, 2-0 spot just yet on this bracket. And uh, trying to pull, I, I really do like what Titans Reloaded did here. They tried to pull Gold Fury in the face of Giovanni Giorgio, right? It wasn't like they had a pick. It wasn't like they had a one-man advantage. They attempted to go for the pull, but Dardes walks in, steals it away, and then goes in for the cleanup. It just seemed like a very risky call regardless, because the gold lead is pretty heavily in Giovanni Giorgio's favor. But Titans Reloaded, they understand as well that sometimes you just got to go for a pull. Sometimes you just got to force an objective and try and make things happen. End up getting two, which isn't bad, but losing the objective and then end up losing three, unfortunately. Just does not go their way, and Dardes has been playing... I would say pretty cleanly, like definitely not the uncontested number one mid laner at the moment. I've seen so much good play throughout uh, from those top four teams, but Dardis is still a threat when he's on his key picks and uh, definitely add Cuckoo into that list. But uh, it was a conversation I wanted to bring up just in general about teams that are losing and they are willing to make risky calls like that, where they just pull Gold Fury or pull Fire Giant or try and force a fight where they're hiding in the mm -hmm. grass. And it seems like we're seeing that a whole lot more in smite too than we're more akin to because a lot of times teams in those positions will just bleed out they'll be losing and they'll just sort of give up and they'll sit underneath their phoenixes and they'll try and defend to the best of their ability but i've been seeing a lot more of just let's just do it you know let, let's just pull gold let's just pull fire giant let's just yeah, fight let's do it to see if it ends up working out and sometimes uh it definitely can in the positive lights right 
Yeah, exactly. Unless you're you secure it. If it gets stolen from you, you feel a little bad. Like <laughs> Darnas feels great about that last cold period. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He sure does. And uh, that's the thing. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, last up, we have uh, Mockingbird versus Yodi Gang, which was a matchup that I think we were all pretty excited for. These were yeah. teams that were both battling for like that you know, fourth, fifth spot uh, in the top of the leaderboards. You you want to stay in that top four because that puts you in this position where you could just get your first win, but you still have that two-loss buffer, or that three-loss mm-hmm. buffer, I should say, before you are uh, kicked out of Swiss in that case. So um, this is a matchup I think we all had our eyes on, and I think Duduin plays this dance perfectly where you need your t- you got to wait for your team, right? You're, you're, you're trying to stop a fire giant from being snuck. It's, it's not easy. Uh, and you just go in there and cook, and that's kind of the idea here. Um, the dude is just get, getting in there, trying to stall, does as much damage as he really can so the fire drive doesn't happen, and then just flops out, and the rest of the team is able to group up uh, and help out, which unfortunately for Yodi Gang means that the sneak, the, the, the fire giant sneak does not necessarily go their way. But hey, if you're mocking board, you're, you're, you're pretty hyped about that one because uh, this Bacchus pick has been in and out of the meta, in mm-hmm. and out of that top pick selection, uh, but still hyper aggressive, super annoying, and super survivable. That that just flop stun combo. Uh, you get everyone drunk and then leave. They can't really chase you down. I think Dudu and plays that flawlessly just to make sure that you're not in one of those positions, like I said, where a team from behind will just try and pull a fire giant in front of you, take it and get away. And not only have they stalled the game out, they're bringing the lead closer. They're, they're, they're trying to catch back up, and you don't really have that, that lead that you once had. So, uh, shout out to Duduin, of course, and uh, Mockingbird, definitely another team to keep your eyes on. But that does lead us to our matchups in general uh, Team Risk versus Smoke Break, and Mockingbird versus Giovanni Giorgio. Those are going to be our 2 yep. 0 matchups. Two of those squads are guaranteed going to playoffs. Um, and I know we save our predictions for the end, but. Just something that you got to consider. There is a lot of stackers available, but there's also plenty of teams that have fallen into that 1-1 section that are going to be the the next up, right? That Mm -hmm. are in that one-off from qualification section. And that's what's so fun about a Swiss format. There's constantly teams that you have to keep your eye on that are in different sections. Um, And just because you're you're at the top does not guarantee you anything. And just because you're at the bottom doesn't mean you're going home. You know, there's always going to be more action. Um, so that was my EMEA breakdown. And I do believe we have a schedule that we can look at just moving forward uh, to see the matches that are coming through. And, uh, yep, Mockingbird versus Giovanni Giorgio. That's going to be a qualification one. Team Risk versus Smoke Break, which is going to be an absolute banger. Um, not to mention Threat Level Midnight starting off our weekend. Uh, versus let's go Asgard again. And to remember, just because they're off air doesn't necessarily mean that these teams are unviewable to you. Some of these guys might be streaming, so definitely check that out. And if, if you miss it, we will break it down for you next week. Exactly. And if I remember correctly, the idea is that two of those are the 2 one of these teams moves on to playoffs. Right. And two of those are the 0-2s, one of these teams gets knocked down to GSL groups, right? You, you're going to have to go the long way around through stage three and then stage four which is playoffs and that's where the other teams will be waiting for you so you essentially get to stick stick skip a stage uh if you're one of the top four teams here and Shelly, you said we should wait should we wait till like the end end for predictions or do you want to I mean, that's just where we usually do it right okay yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, i can give yeah, you my predictions yeah, yeah. if you would no, like no 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 no, no 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 i think you i think you hold on to them that that's what we like to call I guess burying the lead, maybe not. Burying the lead usually means something different. That's what we like to call a little tea foreshadowing. Foreshadowing, uh, because then later we, we can go back and Trelly will tell us those things that he was just talking about. I will. I <laughs> those two, those teams will be. Uh, <laughs> Hawk, I'm not saying that, but yes, <laughs> for lack of a better for lack of a better term. Uh, so, any, any like final thoughts on on EMEA last week that uh, that you want to do to put a little pretty little bow on it? A pretty little bow on it would be that we have an absolute banger matchup in Team Risk versus Smoke Break. Make sure you're tuning in this weekend for that. Yeah. Uh, the meta is still shifting and evolving clearly. Oh yeah. Because unless things change, as which of they still now, can. Yeah, as of <laughs> now. We do have Yamoja and Baron open for play, so that will definitely change things. Um, Going to be an exciting weekend. You don't want to miss it.
especially since you can count to 10 with emoji is what i uh, what i learned earlier in spanish, <laughs> in spanish specifically if you watch this week in smite 2 but know. only on dealer street <laughs> uh but thanks jelly that's a i like i had a good time and emea that was actually incredibly helpful because i missed one of those days because well, i was now you've been uh, filled in you're welcome and yeah so now now i know and to learn about the other half of that day wowie it's jmac uh so tell me what's the what's the lowdown what was the skinny on what happened with uh na last week and it was a very surprising week, I think, is probably the easiest way to put it. I think some of the matches that we kind of predicted to be, you know, some of the best matchups of the weekend kind of fizzled out a little bit. You yeah. know, team name with five ends versus Borst, that was like the one we walked into going, this is the match of the week. This is the one you've got to watch. It didn't end up being, it wasn't a bad set, but it was nowhere near the level of set that I'm going to be talking a little bit about later. There's some extra foreshadowing. Make sure you stick around on that part. Um, instead, I do kind of want to hone back in on team with five ends because this is... For lack of a, t a better term, a, a team full of weird and silly guys that like mm -hmm. to do weird and silly stuff sometimes in Smite. And the biggest one that stuck out this week was PBM on stream before he's even playing is loaded up into a practice I remember this. playing Neath support <laughs> against the Ymir bot. And what does he decide to do in his actual games against Borsh, another top team? Bring out the Neath support. Now, I will say, the Neath support itself did not do very good. It didn't do bad. It's called the Peeth. But... <laughs> Mike Peeth, Mike wanted to know it's the, called the, the, the PBM Neath Peeth, whatever you want to call it. The God itself didn't do as great. I think what really came down to this was kind of just a, a player mechanics diff. I, I think that this is just a game where Team of 5Ms, they fell behind in the farm game, but they made up for it in the team fights around the objectives. Also, just little moments like this where, like, how do you predict a Hakate is going to go through their own portal like Pagan does? Great little synergy there in order to be able to pick up the kill at the very end. But this is just a team that has a bunch of confident players they're not afraid to to go down a little bit when it comes to gold because they know they're going to have the team fight cherry was on point with the fire giant steel which is what was able to lead to a situation for them to be able to win game number one they were down there was a gold fury steal then a fire giant steal after that one it was just kind of a mechanics diff on the map there but for team name with five m's i don't know if that's going to be enough necessarily to kind of carry them through the remainder of this i mean there are they are 2-0 so they only need to win one more game but the one that they have to win against next is what I would consider the actual match of the week after watching it, which was Food Drive for Globe versus Scrumptious. Kind of walked into this one going, okay, this one probably should just be Scrumptious. They're technically rated the number one team coming out of the open bracket. Had a little bit of a stumble in this matchup against Food Drive for Globe. And I think more than anything, it's just because... One, Food Drive for Globe is looking really good. Team Scrumptious, they're looking a little bit lost. It, it kind of feels like everybody's on different pages when it comes to Scrumptious. Who wants to be our shot caller? Who wants to be, you know, our playmaker? What exactly needs to get done for this team? I don't have the answers to because right now for Scrumptious, it just does not feel like they're playing as a united team right now. They're just kind of five guys running it down and, and, and trying to win games where food drive for globe they're doing these oddball picks tegvir two times this set goes to the susano adc which is not something that should be working but somehow tegvir is able to make it work it didn't do so hot in game number one because the style of team that was actually drafted against it kind of played against what tegvir wanted to do but game three tegvir looks great on the pick and you just see Scrumps just starting to fall apart a little bit. Now, instead of being up that for that potential promotion week that this one is for Scrumptious, they're now down in the 1-1. One -one. So it means in their best case, maybe next week we see them try and promote upwards. Or if they can't get it together, I mean, this is a team that we could potentially be seeing drop down even further or try and go for that last chance qualification in week number five as a potential. So I think that right now, Food Drive for Globe, they're hot. I mean, this is a really good team. And they've got a fun matchup. I, I think against them and Team Name with 5Ms will really kind of be the true test for both of these teams. I think that Team Name with 5Ms has kind of been coasting a little bit through their matchups. It's not often you get to run neat support and still just kind of, in my eyes, say that you're kind of coasting through things. But it was a great matchup for them. And then Food Drive for Globe have just been looking pretty good all, all the way across. I mean, this is a team that took, I think it was second seed back in week one of the open bracket. We said, Okay, is this real? Was it a fluke? You know, you just got to win, you know, one game at a time to get to a finals of open bracket. But now taking a 2-1 against Scrumptious, this is definitely a team that I think has kind of cemented themselves in that top four spot and one that has a really good chance to be one of the first two teams to qualify out of North America. The other one is Cowabunga. And we've been saying this probably since the, the start of Smite 2 Esports, is that Cowabunga is like 
the guys to beat right now, and especially Paul in the mid lane. I mean, Paul has had a bounty on his head probably since the first ever tournament popped out. And he goes to the Anuus, which isn't a pick that we typically associate with Paul, but he looked really strong. Uh, even finding a solo kill in this clip, almost picking up a second one if it wasn't for a couple of stray minions, Paul probably could have gotten uh, two individual solo kills. But I think this also comes with the, the rise up of the Anubis. You know, we saw it earlier, Distortion F and EMEA really showed off what the tank Anubis can do. Paul kind of started showing off what the mid lane just full damage Anubis is able to do. Nearly picking up, as I say, two solo, two individual solo kills in the same style of clip. And this was just a funny moment where, you know, Panatom says, Don't worry, I got, the, I got you on follow up. And Yorkor just kind of takes it away. But these guys are just one of the most unified teams out there, even when they're doing oddball stuff, when Solar Troll is running, you know, a, a Loki solo, which isn't necessarily the, the most competitively viable thing, it's still working out because these guys are just on the same page consistently. And when Sot's able to make plays like this, I mean, finding a triple Loki ult isn't the easiest thing to do, and finding in the middle of a big team fight like that is really what kind of elevates Sot to that next level up there. I think that Kawabunga are almost guaranteeing themselves kind of that top two spot to get out of here for this week. You know, they're going to be playing up against Name in Progress, who I think is maybe a, a bit of a dark horse in the competition. You know, we look at, you know, even the names on the on the Name in Progress roster, you're probably not really seeing anybody that really stands out. It's just a bunch of guys hanging out, playing some Smite 2, and finding some success. And I think that it, for Name in Progress, they've been looking pretty clean lately. I, do I think that they have a chance to beat Kawabunga? Maybe not quite as much as maybe some of their other oppositions here, but overall, name and progress for, for one of these kind of mid-pack teams to find their way up into the top four, finding a big clean win up against Garf's Goblins as well, who was a team that, in all honesty, I had higher expectations, I would say, of Garf's Goblins. You know, uh, Lord Garfield or Super Deathfang, if you remember back from Smite 1, Sun Prodigy, Death, Kill Camp, Kenny Drunk. I mean, these are names that have been running the rank scene for a long time. They've been playing in all of the competitive amateur leagues back in Smite 1's era. And when you look on the opposite side, I mean, nobody really kind of stands out name-wise. I mean, our Catalyst may be a little bit, but I think that Kaidon is kind of the one that I'm really keeping my eyes on for this Name in Progress roster as the weekend goes on to kind of see what he can do. Because now he's got to face probably his hardest competition. Yeah. Paul, again, and, and Kawabunga. I, I think that this is the real... <laughs> True test now for Name and Progress is going to be their next step competition. You know, how are they going to face off against Kawabunga? And, and for North America, it's now really going to be kind of answering what do we do against the other top teams? Because, you know, we have four going in this week that are playing for two qualifying spots. That means the other two are going to have to drop down in the 2 1 bracket, and other teams are going to have to go up into the 2 1 bracket. So now it's not only, okay, we lost here, what's our next competition? Or for some of the 1 1 teams, we won here what's left over for us to have to try and fight for those spots. And I think the name in progress has now kind of put themselves in a good spot as one of these mid-pack teams to be able to kind of jump up into this top eight and find some potential success. So uh, I think overall, North America was maybe the more surprising region to me as far as results went through. As mentioned earlier, Scrumptious versus, um, Scrumptious versus Food Drive for Globe was probably the set of the week. If there was one North American set I'd go back and tell people to watch, it's that one because it was a really good, strong, dominant game from Scrumptious in game number one. Game two, a lot of back and forth action between the two of them and ends up being up Food Drive for Globe who's able to find a couple of good picks, win the game. And in game three, it was just all Food Drive for Globe at that point. So when it comes to next week's matchups, I think that there's a lot of eyes for me on this Food Drive for Globe team and what they can do against, I would say, a team that was maybe not high, as highly rated as Scrumptious. You know, food, uh, you know, a team name with, with five M's, it's got great names, but they've kind of been struggling a little bit when it comes to them getting to like the semifinal stages or against some of these other top teams. But now we get to see kind of how everything culminates with the both. The kind of unconventional strats of both teams, whether, you know, the, the Susano carry for Tegvir, is that going to be yeah. able to do anything against the Neath support from PBM or whatever in the world it is that these two teams want to pull out for this week? Because it is qualification. Losing here for these two teams at the very least doesn't mean that you're out. It just means that you're one step lower and you have to try and go for the next week. And if you lose, you got that extra cushion. Maybe you can go another week after that. But yeah, being I, this high. I would be very surprised if both of these two teams didn't end up qualifying forward to stage four. It's just a matter of which one kind of brings the heat this week to get to that point and, and you know which one maybe has to play a little bit longer. So for North America, seeing maybe how some of the potential god balance changes that come in with Baron and Yumoja added to the mix. Mike has always been a fantastic Yumoja. I think that this is one where watching 5Ms and watching Kawabunga, I, 
I don't think Aurora necessarily cares about I mean, if Umoja's really good, Aurora's probably going to play Umoja, but I, I think that these four teams, watching them with two new gods added to their roster is probably the most exciting part for me. Yeah, it's something, and I think just all of North America is, is going to be really interesting. I don't think there's a single match this week, and you know what, we can look at them and, and just see them, but I don't think there's a single match that is uninteresting and it's for the exact same reasons that you said like the the it's it's so difficult and i think we talked about this Shelley, on on sunday when we were closing the broadcast but like there are a lot of really good off-air matches that you know i'm, I'm maybe i'll even say a little jealous of uh going to to you know pass by like scrumptious versus borscht should be a really good matchup but again it's because we're watching teams that might get knocked down into stage three and teams that will at least guarantee two on our 5 p.m. sets going to stage four, getting to kind of skip over that. They get like a what, like month off, essentially, if you qualify right here. Because you it's get two a fast track of playoffs. That's plus what like two it. weeks of groups. Yeah. yeah. And then you get to go straight into the playoffs. Uh, a lot of smite. And I'm assuming a lot of smite, too, will change by then because there will be gods and balance and all sorts of things. But JMAC, it leaves us with a really fun week. Yeah, and I think the, the important thing to stress with the on-air matchups for both EMEA and for North America is the first matchup of each of those days for those regions is an elimination. Elim. An elimination in the sense of they have to play in Stage 3 as yep. opposed to getting the, the track to Stage 4, which is what the second matchup. So the play-by-play -play versus uh, E-Kittens matchup, that's an elimination one. In employment LARPers and Theater Thugs, that's another elimination, whereas Food Drive and the Cowabunga match, those ones are to qualify to Stage 4, so you skip all of that. And all the off-air matches are 1-1s one at the moment. So there's potential that for some of those teams, they'll have to play against Team Name But with 5Ms next week or Name in Progress or Cowabunga or Food Drive for Global, whichever one of these ones drop down here from North America. But then that also means that for some of these teams that are in this 0-2 spot, whether it be you know the, the four aforementioned in the, in the 3 p.m. slots, that means they've got a lot of climbing to do if they want to get back in. Uh, I think particularly of these on air for maybe kind of those O2s, I really am kind of looking at what really what Basket Vikings, because I mean, you look at some of the names on that team and you would think that, you know, with, with, with some of their recognition that these guys would be doing a little bit better. But at least from what I noticed in the Basket Vikings matchup that we kind of caught at the tail end of the broadcast last week, we didn't get to watch, you know, the full game two and mm -hmm. there was no game three after that one. It's a team that has been getting a really strong early start to the game, but it's when it comes down to the team fights, when it comes down to the play around objectives, that's where this team is kind of falling apart. And it feels like there just isn't quite the level of communication there. So I think that this is a real big proving week for a lot of these 0-2 teams to try and find that first big win for themselves and get that first step forward to going forward. Yeah, again, one that I think is going to be very fun to watch. And we'll get predictions for who maybe I, I mean, you could maybe do both if you wanted to say who's going to lose. But realistically, the winners, that's who we're looking at, the, the, the champions. Uh, we can do that later because as of now, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, because we, we did North America. Yeah. We did EMEA. Yeah. But it, when I was doing my maths. Yeah. There is other regions. There's like three other places. Yeah. At least. And they're all doing, well, That yeah, you're right. There's, a, there's, a, there's at least three other places. Uh, and at least three of them of those many other places are doing Smite as well. And Smite 2 as well. They're doing Smite 2 too. And well, that just means we need someone who could like cover that. And I think I think that's what that guy that that guy that showed up during your segments for. Uh, yeah, we got Anthony Malum somewhere around here. Uh over there. He's over there. Is he over there? Is he on the TV? Trading again? Places. No, he's not on he's the TV. Not on TV. TV. There. So magical. Last, the, last week he was the floating head of the Wizard of Oz. I do hear him. So Malum? magical. You can even Watch hear this. me. And Malum? Malum? In your head. Yeah, Malum. Charlie? Are you under the desk? Hey, oh, that's Charlie. pretty close. <laughs> we found him. You guys figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, he was, you were, he was hiding behind the I conquest was. map the whole time. Uh, the whole time. Yeah. I'm really trying to learn the map just in case I gotta jump in, do some chair two at any point. I gotta know that stuff. What better way than to go and underneath it like the jing way from earlier you'll be fine this guy <laughs> so uh, malum it turns out like i said there's there's a whole lot of smite going on all over the place uh, and you were tasked with that tracking down a couple regions a few regions uh with brazil latam and and apac all going on all well i'm not going to say all at the same time because it wasn't all at the same time because as we've seen the Feels apac like broadcasts <laughs> are going on at well for us 
wild hours in the morning for yeah. them normal hours again that's 4 30 a.m eastern on smite game you can catch them and they usually end like just a little before <laughs> we go live yeah, like right as we were waking up getting ready for our call times it's we can catch the end of apac get games. the finals great. so uh exactly yeah i guess you probably have a distinct order but what's been happening what's been happening in all those places we got a lot so this week we're going a little bit lighter on brazil and latam this week i've kind of got a apac focus in mind part of that being because i've gotten to speak with the team the smite ocl team that is covering a lot of the apac matches and to say they were ready to info dump on me is an understatement. <laughs> I, at one point, I was like, "You guys know you don't have to do my job, right? I, I promise uh, you can talk with me. I can." And they're like, "No, but here's team profiles. Uh, what else can we possibly give you?" So we're gonna start with Ladam and Brazil. Brazil, unfortunately, no clips again this mm -hmm. week. I did find a couple of vods, but a few were were kind of cut off, and the clips were sort of more. I think people checking in on time zone or at time zones, but checking in on what happened and less exciting clips. So if you are playing in the Brazil open bracket, please make sure you consider streaming, turn those VODs on, send in some clips, tag me around if you see my name around. And going forward, I'll definitely see if I can talk to some more players, maybe find a bit of a more interesting way to find some information mm -hmm. on Brazil. I will say, though, worth noting, last week I did talk about that there was a mini roster apocalypse. There's sort of some interesting aspects of teams that are playing on higher ping there's teams running with north american junglers as well so the update on those two teams the first being ppp who are all playing on ping in brazil they were a favorite and matter of fact there's some names guys that we would know from the open brackets because we saw them compete names like baron Airy. Mm -hmm. they were making it really far i believe we almost saw them upset cowabunga at one point that was their biggest moment in those open tournaments they were first rounded this week in brazil and stats wise i mean it didn't strike me as a run it down kind of game but it didn't really seem quite their style i know there was some talk about why they didn't compete in the north american bracket despite competing in the open tournaments so i'm still eyes on ppp for the rest of the brazil tournament to see kind of how they improve where they shape up maybe what their problems yeah. are if they have their own roster apocalypse uh, last week i mentioned i spoke to power st2 who was on team bob Brazilian, they had a great showing after their mini roster apocalypse. Whatever it was that they ended up doing, it worked out pretty darn well because they went from struggling to make it to semifinals, and I think they even fell in quarterfinals, to making it to semifinals and looking fairly strong, and then completing it, going to finals, but running into the now back to back winners in week one and week number two. And I'm so worried about butchering this name. I've got it typed out. Bellino. Zia, back-to-back -back winners. They look fantastic right now. I mean, is it even fair to say team to watch when they're winning constantly week yeah. after week? It feels like <laughs> it's just their region to lose at this point. So the more we check in on Brazil, and I'll, like I said, I'll try mm -hmm. to see if I can talk to some teams from there and talk to some players. Yeah, I'm excited to see what's kind of going on in the, the nitty-gritty. But, you know, can't can have Brazil without the lat am players and you guys mentioned delo a lot earlier you can find broadcasts of the entirety including i believe they even did the third place match on on underscore the underscore delo yeah. for smite in the sewer also ca he casts with uh piku for lat am games and tess runs production for them so shout out to both of those two members and yeah so talking about lat am and for LATAM, we got some clips to go along with it. So let's just start of start with the chaotic. We had a rematch in the finals, Los Leal versus Malibu. You guys remember last week, I talked about that being a pretty hyped up finals. Well, they met yet again. And game number one, Joe, to quote my notes from Velo, I'm not <laughs> sure if that's IGN, we'll have to see when we actually get in, w went 10 and two and had a really fantastic performance. And all of a sudden you get in game number two after the, the game one stomping, and Joe had a little bit of a target on their back, and I do have a clip of the revenge that was sought after. Oh, of course, no. with some Spanish oh, casting. Oh, this is rude. So rude. Como buscando en la jungla para encontrar una persona desafortunado. Puede ser un nube. Porfa, mira atrás. You can see how mad they were. Un delito de horror. No puede ser. Poor Joe. Joe. Mira la mente. Matado por parte de Will aún antes del partido empezó. Eso fue venganza por tus crímenes contra la humanidad. Y a nubes. 
Ahora hemos ya averiguado the, uh, the rough translation that Dilo provided me with was jungle. that they were looking for their revenge on Anubis, and he said, Anubis, turn around! It's like a horror movie! <laughs> and then he said, they've made him paid for his crimes against humanity in game number one. So, there was some bad blood out for our poor friend Anubis, <laughs> and they, they did not play around. It's so funny, because I, I last week I talked about how Ladam had really been going with the style of invades with a purpose, whereas EMEA... NA, it's sort of like an invade for maybe a pick. But yeah. Ladam's like, no, we we got blood on the mind. We're blood money hunting this Anubis this game. That's the game plan. Everybody on board. <laughs> Whatever it's it takes, fantastic. man. And the fact that they got him, like... They got him. They not just got him. I don't know if he was aware until he was dead that he was getting got. Like, that was, it was very yeah. much like, oh, no! Controller vibrations on. The controller falls off the desk in that moment. Mm-hmm. 100%. But... That game kind of set up, I think, the the feel, so to speak, because Los Leal, they were able to take it once again, to con- continuing to be the, the powerhouse. Remember, Ladam, we have a chance to see some of these teams, and this is the finals moment from Ladam this week, which I'll let Dilo Spanish at us and Piku. Una matanza por el Nubis Beltway, también matado. And shout out to the team captain, Dory, who I believe I'll be talking to to kind of hear here soon to hear a bit about what Los Leal is up to, kind of what their mindset is like as they are emerging as a very, very clear favorite in LADAM, which is something that I know before, like in the lead up to the open bracket for Ladam and the the announcement that there would be spots for them to play into Vegas and so on and so forth. There was a lot of talk of, oh, well, we might see a lot of names that we're so familiar with who, you know, they, they, they're playing in Ladam and they take that opportunity, they make a super team. I mean, th- these are names that within the community, as far as I've been told, are very well known, but I don't look at those and see many names where I'm like, oh, I remember this name from Smite 1 which I think speaks volumes to the quality of players that we're yeah. seeing in LADAM for sure. And it makes me Malibu and, and Los Leal are both on a straight trajectory right now towards being the favorites back to back weeks, playing each other in finals, mm-hmm. getting better each time. And they're in terms of their meta. I was talking with Tess who runs production for the sewer cast where you can find all these LADAM games. Tess was telling me a, a lot about how, it seems like the Latin play style is very derivative of the EMEA play style, less than North America. It's a very strategic, and I'm referring more to Smite 1 for sure, but it's very strategic, very slow paced, looking on the map, seeing what you want to get, having your your response picks, even in picks and bans. You're getting this sort of, okay, we're going to pick Odin here because that guarantees the Bacchus the Bacchus and Hakate or the Bacchus and Ymir combination, that opens us up a free pick in our first pick and a free pick in our second and third picks. It's a it's a very interesting draft style. And I wonder, I find myself wondering, for those Ladam teams that do compete, if they have such an evolved style of meta, if they're looking at EMEA mm-hmm. for inspiration on how to play the map, then once we get into those, those inter-region matchups, they might have a real advantage in picks and bans because they're coming at it from a completely different perspective. And in terms of actual game film, I feel like a lot of North American and EMEA teams may not have done the proper research and could get really caught off guard by that. Yeah, that's something, and we've kind of seen that, and that's my um, always my favorite part when we get to see regions finally clash against each other, is just you might like maybe the run it down style just overwhelms you and, and things like that. Maybe uh, as I see, you know, Los Lille being mentioned as like a very strategic team and as, as you know, you had talked about like, maybe that's the smart play. Maybe it's the, the wait them out and let it cook kind of thing. It's always going to be fun. Yeah. I can't wait. Oh my God. It's too many weeks from now. It's, so, it's in like know, December. It it's in like two months. When you start to think about it, but it it's, so I cannot exciting. wait to see them in December and, and have everybody kind of playing against each other here on land Same. at that too. So again, shout out to D'Lo. Make sure you guys check out the the Sewer crew to follow those LADAM games. They've been consistently casting them on Saturdays. And then I believe occasionally they do also do some some of the uh, off-air matches. broadcasts of the mainstream yeah. and some off-air matches in Spanish as well. So if you're a Spanish speaker or, and you're looking to see some other Founder Series action in a language more native to you, that's also a good spot to go. But that was LADAM in Brazil. 
Now, I, the chunk of information, the meat and potatoes of what I brought today is APAC. Because like I said, they they were more than willing to to blow me up my DMs, blow up my pings with all the information I could possibly handle. And you can check out APAC, as you guys were talking about, on Smite Game now. So I figure it'd be a good week to kind of do a little bit of light profiles of the top teams, recap the week, so that if you find yourself awake at 4 a.m. <laughs> Eastern time, like myself, you have a better idea of what you're actually checking in on, for sure. Yeah, either you haven't gone to bed, um, which I'll throw Lermy under the bus, because that's a very common Real. Lermy sleeping schedule, or you're waking up super early, which maybe based on what you just said is something that you do, but like my father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a <laughs> there was a lot this week with APAC. The the general week uh-huh. recap of the week for me is the bottom the bottom three teams, one of which Raven Guard, really impressed the the Smite OCL peeps, where they were looking at Team Raven Guard as this sort of uh, you know your name. We don't know most of your names. You're kind of you're, you're in the scene, but you're expected to do poorly. They found themselves playing up to an incredible extent and in a weird spot in the bracket. And I'll kind of explain this a bit further. So Fish and Sunday School. If you watched Smite Too Long, didn't watch last week, you heard me talk about Fish and Sunday School. They are the top two teams right now in APAC. They're on everyone's favorite list. Sunday School with names that we've seen play at Smite World Championships in the past, like Texi. Uh, I believe it was another one, which was uh, Vintage, mm-hmm. who I believe played to get into the uh, one of the competitive leagues that we saw from Oceana. Those teams are beyond favorites, Fish and Sunday School. They met, and last week, you might have remembered Fish kind of taking an L from Sunday School. Well, I brought a clip to kind of show how their matchup went this week, and we can hear the, Phoenix, the caster for Smite OCL because, take us through it. You, know, you, you are playing like a three... Uh, a three two oh, or four fish? one. Sorry, Charlie. It's kind of just. Five, <laughs> Thank you so much. And I know that two are off to the side. Aries. Old. I was gonna oh, say it. No escape. Trying to find who <laughs> yeah. can, but a lot of you're right. Great wall on a lot of CC and to use there. But there's Yarda's ultimate and simply finds madness and flicker in the backline. Spirit of the Nine Winds comes out and great jukes across the board. Flicks finds Tilly. J Meadows. This could be it. Fish are pushing into the left side. Phoenix. They've got five members strong. They want to go for the Titan. Osha finds Pesto the Penguin. They're pushing into the Titan room. J Beto, We might have a new team that could contest for the first place spot in Oceana. Ultimate out from Platinum Pete forces two Vegas is out. He's able to pick up flicks. Is it enough? Platinum Pete, he's trying to defend one HP on the Loki. 1800 health on the Titan. 1000 ulti finds Pete. Smite tour on that thing. It's not enough. Fish take the game. You can, we, uh, you we speak fluent of caster to, to know the true, <laughs> like <laughs> honest excitement and shock coming from the casters there in Smite OCL of Fish. Fish? That, I love the energy. I it's love so the energy, good. and I love that I you love actually that said that name out loud. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, I know. Th- I was, I was going to say, thankfully, the casting was quick enough to get the whole name out, for sure, because that, that could have been a, t- a dangerous tongue twister to fall victim to. I would have said Neath, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Charlie's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, he's loading in that day. He yep. sees the two rosters. He goes, yeah, I'm not saying that yep. name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've learned that about Trelly. Yeah, there's definitely a I'm not saying that name aspect to it. Yep, and uh, and it stands by it. What you will. And then you catch him saying it once, you're like, aha. I have, uh, yeah, I usually do slip up at least once. <laughs> so that was our semifinals between Fish Fish, and Sunday School, where Big up, big Time Upset had the server, the Discord server rocking, and that put Fish and Goblins Fish? in the finals. And Goblins started out with an early lead, Fish won a back and forth game two. Goblin went with a salty run back. And it, 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 the lore between these two teams was really interesting to me because Goblins found themselves in this spot of, well, this is not, first of all, how did we get here to finals? Second of all, this is not the team we expected to face because, as I mentioned, Sunday School is such an overwhelming favorite that when you see Sunday School match up with Fish in the semifinals, you're, on the other side, you're th- saying, oh, okay, so let's start looking up on. Sunday school, let's get ready for this finals matchup. And then, to the shock of goblins, <laughs> Fish arrived. Now, the reason I mentioned Raven Guard before, by the way, Raven Guard did fall to that third place match with Sunday school. And um, Sunday school was not in a great mood. And I, it was a lot. I believe 42 <laughs> to 10 was the final score for Sunday school. So they got their emotions back out after taking the loss in, in semifinals. <laughs> but looking at finals for APAC and talking about Fish versus goblins i did bring a couple of clips from that and uh 
we got a quadra kills. We have the finals. I mean, honestly, the quadra kill, pretty cool. Kind of hard to ignore the quadra kill for, I brought from APAC as well. So I guess we can start there. Uh, I, uh, it's you know, so much. And this is actually and Goblin and versus Raven Guard. Goblins didn't end up in the finals, too. So. Wanting to take them into this these names are who you would see up against. Coming Fish. Out. Sure Fish. Got this jet in his Fish. mouth. A talisman of purification getting popped there. Another Ooh. one getting popped as well. Yeah, and so much Forever's damage. Having a field day. Hakate, right? Three kills again. Just Hakate, That's things. a triple kill. And a one hand no. HP Neon Flames trying to get away and a quadra kill for rex oh, forever rex. coming out as they're pushing forever, towards huh? the phoenixes this is the game that rex needed here at the end he is 10 and 3 and loving these so this kills. is what sent raven guard to like that third place match game. against no sunday school left again for raven I, and I was gonna say, spo and spoiler based, based on what you said they kind of maybe before. became a, Poor a punching raven bag guard. No they looked great <laughs> i mean again they really did surprise the the casters the admin team for smite ocl they were very surprised at the raven guard performance <laughs> he just, was able to throw you know, it out in the tough, shell. Just tough third place. Like, yes. Sunday school is, is the cowabunga of, of, a, of APAC. APAC. Is, I think the easiest way to explain it for <laughs> North American viewers in particular. Uh, a lot of familiar names, and which I, I guess I can touch on really quick for Sunday school before that gets kind of too far away. I mentioned uh, Texi, who played as a jungler on Athletico, which did represent Oshi at a Smite World Championships. Uh, the coach for Sunday school is Sharks, who familiar with the smite community as in general you are familiar with sharks for sure and i feel like a lot of that kind of lends itself to sunday school being such a standout mm -hmm. team but then fish who did get i kind of said it right that time who did get the better of sunday school they're more known as the grinders team so they're they're the the ranked i'm up way too late i'm going through it and i was actually talking to uh max innocent rabbit last night and we were talking about oceana and he was telling me that their ranked is a very unique experience. It's very much a night. They get on Discord. They ping the whole server, and it's like, rank time. Let's get on, boys. Let's grind it out. And that's how the rank queues go in Oceana. So to be known as the, the, the ranked sweat lords in a region where everyone gets on ranked at the same time <laughs> in an organized fashion, to me, says a lot about fish. Which explains how they got themselves to the finals and how yeah. did those finals go? I brought a clip to show that from Smite OCL I again on Sundays. Sieges because I think that he can zone super easily. Because, like, oh, never mind. Oz really nice flank out here. Rotation over as fish are pushing five men deep into the T1 tower in mid. A lot of damage coming out across the board here as we see Osme Poppy's ultimate. Low health bars for the Susano simply though does dash out and a good use of the Phantom Shell to keep their health bars up and healthy. Susano pops the Osme and flicks, turns it around and Invictus Yana picks up Osme and the dive is good for Fish here. Looking for the T1 Tower, huge wall there! Yana picks up I can't help but feel like if we T2 saw that happen on a broadcast of game Fish for EMEA or North America and we saw Bacchus get a flank like that, but the other team walked away with the wipe. <laughs> it would be an emotional roller coaster for casters and the team who lost their players alike. I mean, that that turnaround, I think, speaks to the level of play that Fish do bring. Mm -hmm. And Fish were able to take the finals from that over Goblin. And I think what that does for Fish is it sets them up as this team who they were able to take out Sunday School, who is, is the overwhelming favorite, who now it's kind of like, oh, so Fish is legit. And further and further we go and i'm really excited because i get to talk to some of the casters for smite ocl soon I, i'm really curious how that's going to affect when fish and sunday school meet up and play because one thing we saw from cowabunga and scrumptious to once again reference north america is every time they played against each other you do see the, that adjustment of strats but because the god pool and smite 2 at least for the time being as we grow towards that increase by vegas it is a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. You can make very significant adjustments very easily. And that's the big thing I'm personally looking for in the next time we see Fish versus Sunday School. So uh, shout again to APAC for all the information. I wish I could read it all, but it would take us so long. <laughs> we could do it would just be too long, didn't long. watch APAC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, make sure you guys tune in on Sundays to APAC to check all of that out. And going forward, I can't wait to talk to the casters there and learn even more and know all the nitty gritty I, and also, shout out to Yada, who I called Yada last week and has been officially renamed, and everyone's calling him Yada. So that's my bad. But <laughs> at least you have lore now, you know? 
Yeah, lore behind the name. That's uh, that's what everyone strives for. I'll also mention, Opwash said the, the, the Smite OCL team has put the recent APAC VOD up on YouTube. So, like, if you just want to watch that, yeah, they're really there's good a great place that. to just go watch it. And I can assume that, especially since you say they're really good about it, guess what will be there after Sunday when their games are yep. finished? You'll never it's guess. A, <laughs> at OCL Smite on YouTube. Yep. <laughs> I was, I was just about to throw. You were about same. to throw it. Okay, I was about to throw that out there. Look at that. Didn't have it on hand with them, but yeah, uh, those guys have also just been a pleasure to talk to. Um, speaking with, I believe it's Redacted, who's one I've been keeping contact yes. with to uh, to kind of keep the broadcast going and whatnot. Tells me how much fun these guys are having and how much of like just a pleasure it is to even be able to be on the channel to kind of broadcast that and give a little bit of extra light to that region. Just because it, it, it's a region, if you just look back historically, you know, through Smite One's time. After the last, I think it was what, like season five, maybe season six was kind of the fall off of like competitive OCE, OCL kind of region in like larger competitive swipe, but there was still a very passionate and hungry group of players over there. So now they have that opportunity to play again competitively and to shine a little bit more light on the region. I mean, these guys are, are, are on fire and hungrier than ever. It, does, it makes it fun to watch, especially like when you get matchups like that where you have, uh, you know, the top teams from a week prior meeting in a semifinal which is or i guess in swiss meeting in uh, you know like a one one i guess like we've had with some of them uh, just having these teams meet in in places where it then eliminates one of them from getting to the the other better quote unquote spot it keeps things spicy and so far it seems like all the open brackets and the other regions are giving us that Save that, that level uh but also yeah so poor, poor danzaburra falling off his little soapbox uh i said we were going to keep predictions to the end and the way i've realized i've done this is charlie i'll go to you for emea yeah and you can give me your two teams you think are gonna make it team risk giovanni giorgio J Mac, i'm gonna go to you for na and you can give me your two teams you think are gonna make it so the first one is easy cowabunga the second one is tough between team with five m's and food drive pick you coward but i'm going food drive for this one wow. nice. i think food drive for globe have what it takes to, to potentially bring it to, to team with five m's listen getting to the 2-0 portion of the bracket is all of these teams could easily like oh, yeah. there, there's no, no nothing guaranteed but i just wanted to be quick about it to go to my <laughs> two. I, didn't, I didn't want to do a spiel all right i picked my two malum i'm gonna confuse you because i'm not gonna ask you about your regions instead because my eyes are on swiss i'm gonna say you get one team from emea and one team from na <laughs> uh just as the who you think are, are gonna qualify oh well i mean i i'm a big time team risk believer and i am since my first day on the job, you guys know, I'm a food drive for Globe believer in saying, hey, watch this team in that first open tournament. And I was like, guys, you know, first day, who cares what this I say? This guy wants guys, to be J-Mac so bad. Pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he took it right from me, too. J-Mac knows how much the amateur scene keeps, like, in lockstep, and J-Mac's like, I'm going to be taking bets from you, Malum. That's mine now. <laughs> well, unlucky. Exactly. But Malum, no, I'm just the big J-Mac fanboy now. Unlucky. <laughs> yeah, we trade back and forth. Depends on the day. But no, Food Drive for Globe, I think, is a definitely... I think last week was their for at least from their perspective they're okay we can do this i think this is their time to prove it to everybody else if we're a, a legit contender well that means we've got a lot of matchups to pay attention to absolutely and to watch that's not even to mention the fact that there are some teams that are getting eliminated into stage three where they're gonna have to play against a bunch of other teams from the open bracket side of things to try and qualify into playoffs where the other two teams the teams that we were talking about that are going 2-0 potentially 3-0 this week are going to just shoot straight towards in stage four and that means that the only way for you to find out is the same way that we find out which is to watch this weekend as swiss goes on and of course tune into all those other places and other times that we mentioned to watch all the other streams to to try and catch brazil and latam and apac while they're going on alongside our swiss stage and of course our north american and european stage if you want to sign up your team for any of those in any of those regions uh, you can go to rallycry.gg slash smite 2 click on the competitions button they're all right there you can find whichever one is relevant to you and of course you want to make sure uh, that you tune in here uh, most importantly, because that's where we are, at least, uh, twitch.tv slash smite game at 11 a.m., both uh, Eastern and on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but until then, I've been Gormizer. That's Trelly. That's J Mac. Somewhere in the ether, that's Anthony Malum. Way back there, everyone. Uh, thank you from, from us, from, from production, for everyone at High Res Studios, and we'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> Made in Georgia.
could be my 